Welcome to church this morning. Welcome if you're here. So glad that you're able to be with us and that you, that you made Sunday a priority to get out here. If you're watching online, so glad that you're making a priority as well in your home. We're jealous of your pajamas, and, uh, but, but we're so thankful that we get to be together, whether online or in person. Hey, over the last couple weeks, we've kind of been in these things called intimate encounters, and um, they've just kind of been a space for us really to to read some scripture, to worship, to read some scripture, to worship, and to kind of worship kind of all the way through. And uh, we're going to continue that today. And uh, so whether you're watching online, jump in with us. We're going to worship while we worship today. If you want to stand, you can do that. If you want to sit, you could do that. You want to kneel, you could do that. Um, whatever, you, whatever you'd like to do um, of those three, that'd be awesome. And and just just worship with us. But We're going to jump in. If you have a Bible, I want to encourage you to open up to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, take something out to write some notes or or grab your phone. But we're going to read here in uh, in Mark chapter 5. But as you're as you're turning there, um, you know, one of the things that that I I think many are are, are beginning to notice, I I know we're we're noticing and, and something that that's really been something we've been talking about is, you know, right now people are more disconnected. Um, than ever before in a in a time when we should be more connected than ever we find that 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 many are more disconnected than ever before and we're disconnected from each other many are disconnected from themselves many are disconnected from from God but but you see the church was never designed to sit on the sideline the church was never designed to sit on the bench and just wait things out, to wait out the storm, to just see what happens. We were never designed to do that. And right now, in a moment like this, we have the opportunity of a lifetime. There are people searching for hope. There are people searching for joy. There are people searching for peace. And we just happen to, as Jesus followers, know where that can be found. And it's only in him so we're, we're gonna read here in in mark chapter 5 and I just kind of want to title this next few moments together called it's time it's time it's time to to get off the sidelines and jump in it's time to do the thing that God's asked us to do it's time to to ask those hard questions it's time to do something about what we see going on in the world around us we've talked about that it's not about us it's about him Pastor Preston spoke on uh, self-righteousness. Pastor Brad talked about it's time to grow, like this is a season to grow. And, and Pastor Noel preached on the fact that there are things that we need to surrender. And today we're gonna talk about it's time. It's time to get in. It's time to jump in the game and do something about what we see around us. You see, we cannot use quarantine as an excuse any longer. I think one of the things we're realizing that this is going on a little bit longer than all of us thought, all of us wanted. And now I'm not in any way, I, I understand there are very, there are many, many of you watching who, who are choosing to stay home or, or want to stay home or whatever, and, and that's totally okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not in any way trying to speak to how you're quarantining. But what I am saying is whether you're at home or here or out or wherever, disconnection is not okay. Disconnection is not okay. We have got to stay connected. We've got to be connected and grow in connection disconnection is not okay from ourselves from each other or from god and we cannot allow it to be okay in the lives of the people that are closest to us this is our time as the church this is the time for us to show his hope his joy his peace to the world around us and if we're going to do that believe in mark chapter 5 there's some questions that god wants us to ask of ourselves so that we could do everything God's asked us to do. And so really that we can become all that God has asked us to become. Mark chapter five, verse 15 says this. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to depart from their region and when he got into the boat, he, had, uh, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends 
and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed and began to proclaim in Decapolis and all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled. See, there's something different about Mark 5. Because I don't know if you know, but throughout the gospels, one of the things that you'll find is Jesus says, Jesus will, will heal somebody or he'll perform this miracle. And then he'll respond by saying, now go, but don't tell anybody. Go, but don't tell anybody. And what, what you learn is that it's because it's not time, right? We were gonna try to make Jesus who we wanted him to be for us, but it wasn't time for Jesus to ultimately fulfill what he came to this earth to do. But here in Mark 5, something different happens. This is one of the few places in all of the gospels where Jesus says, go and make sure everyone knows of, of the goodness of God and the compassion that he has had on you. You know, that's our mission, you know. That's what we're here to do. And so today as we worship and as we dig into Mark 5 and ask these questions of ourselves that I believe God is asking us, let's open our heart and understand that he is here. He has come here to encounter us. We have come here to encounter him. And whether we're here in this room or watching online, the God of the universe is here. Disconnection is not okay. Let's connect with him today. Can we do that? Come on, you can stand, you can kneel, you can bow, whatever you want to do, but let's worship together.
just want to be where you are, hearing your presence, and I just want to be near your heart, cause there is nothing like your love, no, there is nothing like your love. that whether we're here in this room or we're watching online, that God's presence is with us. You know, here in Mark um, chapter 5, the first question that that I believe God gives us to ask of ourselves that's obvious here in Mark chapter 5, again, there's something different about Mark 5 in that Jesus makes a point to say, no, 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 you can't get in the boat. I need you to go home. I need you to go back to the city and tell them of God's goodness and his compassion that he's had on you. There's something different in this moment. So one of the things we do is we dig in to see what, how did this interaction go? And the first thing we see in Mark 5 is that um, the writer makes it very clear where this man is at. And the first question that I believe God wants us to ask of ourselves is, is where are you at? Where am I at? Okay, if you're taking notes, go ahead and write that down. Where am I at? I wonder, when, when was the last time that you asked yourself that question? I think there are seasons of my life recently in the last six months where I find myself asking that question like multiple times a day. Okay, hold on, Isaac. Where are you at right now? Like, how are you doing? But if I'm honest, I think there's some weeks that go by where I maybe haven't asked that question. And it is, it's kind of affected me and some of the relationships around me. But where are you at right now? If you were to be honest, where's your heart at? Where's your mind at? Where's your perspective at? See, in Mark 5, again, it, it is very clear where this man is at. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a couple of the, couple of the things that kind of describe where this man is at. And just, you don't have to raise your hand. We don't need to raise our hand. I think we've all kind of been here at some point. But just go ahead and kind of take a mental note if any of these describe maybe where you're at currently or where you've been recently, all right? Mark 5 makes it clear where this man was at. He is alone. He's, he's isolated. He's kind of in a cave. He's a little unstable. He's a little uncontrollable. He, he kind of lacks some self-control. He's been abandoned by the people around him. He's cutting himself. He's hurting. Okay? Like, like that's where... That's where he's at. Not, not the best place. Not, 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 a, not a fantastic place at all. In fact, let, let, let's read a couple verses just kind of talking about, because again, 
if we're going to if we're going to be all that God's called us to be and accomplish what he's has us on this earth in this moment in this present time right now with everything going on we've got to know where we're at we've got to do something about what's in our heart and what's in our mind proverbs 4 verse 23 says above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it okay guard your heart we've got to know number one we got to know where we're at and where our heart's at and then we've got to do everything we can to protect that Luke 6, verse 45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Where are you at right now? What's in your heart? What's in your mind? Where do you find yourself right now? Are you doing well? Feel like you're moving? Feel like you're making progress? Or does it feel like you're alone? A little bit. Have you felt isolated recently? Again, disconnection is not okay. We've got to do something about that. See, but the, the, the great news about when we ask this question, where are you at today, is number one, that, that, that God kind of already knows, okay? Like, spoiler alert, like God knows where you're at. And one of the things that I've learned over the course of my life is that, to be honest, where I'm at is often a lot more obvious to the people around me than I even think. There are a lot of times I, I, I've thought, man, I'm, I'm pretty good at kind of hiding. I'm having a rough day or this, but like my wife can tell immediately, right? Like you have those people in your life that they just know you better than others. And like, like they, they just can kind of tell, right? Like I, what I've learned is that if I'm, if I'm dealing with something, it's, it's a lot more obvious than I realize. So the, the smart thing to do would just be to say, hey, um, here's where I'm at right now. God, he, here's where I am. I'm not going to hide it you know, everybody else obviously knows too. So I'm just, I'm stressed. I'm frustrated. I feel alone. This, this is where I'm at. If we're going to do what God's called us to do, and if we're ultimately going to accomplish that mission, we've got to understand where we're at, but know that Jesus already knows. See, one of the things I love about God is, is let's just like kind of dig in here and understand that, um, this man is, is in a cave and let's just for the sake of like saying like, he's crazy. Okay, like he just, he kind of is, right? Like based on the explanation, that's kind of how we would describe that in like current language, right? He's, he's a little crazy. And now I'm not saying you're demon possessed. I'm not saying I am, but we have our issues, right? Like we've got some issues, okay? But we realize here like, so in Mark 5, Jesus, they come all the way across the water. Jesus says, hey, got the disciples, hey, let's get in the boat. We're going across the water, right? Now, I don't know about you, but... I don't decline a boat ride, okay? If we're going on the water, we're going to go on a boat, like, yes, I'm in. You don't have to, I don't have to pray about it. We're just going to go, okay? And so they all get in the boat, and these fishermen, okay, apparently experience the storm of a lifetime because people who should be used to storms on the water all of a sudden are panicking, freaking out, and we find that Jesus is sleeping under the deck, okay? So they go... Jesus wakes up and he goes, oh, ye of little faith. He says, peace, be still, calms the storm. And it's just like done, right? Now, um, then they get to the other side only to realize that this whole like life or death moment they just had was for one guy who's kind of crazy. Like we did all of this for him. And so one of the things that, that we need to understand is no matter where you are at, like, that's the lengths God is willing to go to to get to you. That's the lengths he's willing to go to to come and meet with us, to encounter us. You see, one of the things you got to understand is an encounter with God is always personal and purposeful. It's pers it was personal for Jesus. He went all the way across to meet that one man. And was it worth it? Absolutely. To meet one person. So no matter where you are at today, know and trust and believe that God is on his way to you if he's not there already. In fact, he probably is because he knows where you're at, whether you're watching online or you're here in this room. But we have to know, where are we at? God knows, but do we know? Where are you at? I want you to close your eyes and bow your heads just for a moment. I want you to ask yourself that question. Where am I at? God, where am I at? 
Psalm 139 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. Come on, let's worship together. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned, and I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, amazing love, how can it be? My king would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. And I'm forgiven. You were forsaken, and I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Oh, amazing love! Amazing love.
I honor you in all I do, in all I do. that we find about our God is that he knows where you are and wherever you find yourself today he doesn't condemn you he's not angry with you he's not upset with you the Bible says that he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that through him we might be saved the second thing in Mark 5 that the, the second question that we need to ask ourselves as we look at the context of this story is, is what needs to go? What needs to go? See, in Mark 5, it's, a, it's abundantly clear where this man is at. And again, I'm not saying that, that you or I are demon possessed, but we got some issues. We have some things that, that, that tend to get in the way of us accomplishing what God is asking us to accomplish or do on this earth. And, and again, right now is the time. It is time. For the church not to be on the bench, not to be sitting on the sideline, but to get in and do something about what we see going on in the world around us. And the second question that we got to ask ourselves is what needs to go in me, in my life? Mark chapter 5, verse 8 says, For he, Jesus, said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Ephesians 4, verse 31 says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. See, there are some things in us that must go before we can show that goodness and that compassion to those around us. There are some things that tend to kind of get in the way a little bit. You know, it, this reminds me when we ask the question, like, what, what must go? What in me needs to leave so that his goodness and his compassion can overflow out of me? Uh, I, I'm reminded of when I was a kid. So I, I played baseball my whole life um, uh, up, in, up until college. And I remember when I was a kid, uh, and I, we were going on all these travel tournaments. And we were living in the Midwest at the time. And, and anytime we played a tournament, my grandparents are from Wisconsin. So anytime we played a tournament in or near Wisconsin, we stayed at grandma's house, right? Because the food's better, the bed's free, and the food's free. So you're definitely going to stay there, Right. Um, and, and so we would go there, but one of the things you need to understand about my grandma is my grandma, um, was an interior decorator and interior designer. And so she would like, companies would hire, she'd come in and like design the model homes of, of houses or design other people's houses. And like, she designed them very pretty. Right. Um, and, and so grandma like hated dirt. Okay. Like, again, I played baseball and I was like 12 and 14. Okay. So, um, just being in the dirt was half of the fun. Right. And so, but my grandma hated dirt. And so we would come to her house and I'm not kidding. There was one time we showed up at her house and there was plastic on the floor, like from those model homes, right? There's plastic on the floor, plastic on the couches, right? And there's just like that basically sending a message, like, don't sit here. But if you do, like, I've already made sure you're not going to get anything dirty or messy. You know what I mean? Like she would, even to this day, okay, I'm like, I'm, I'll be 29 in a couple weeks. And even to this day, anytime we go to grandpa and grandma's house, I have to have this like internal pep talk of like, okay, don't touch anything. Make sure everything gets put back. Like put the pillows back. Like don't leave anything. Because like I'm telling you, she will know if a chocolate is gone from the little deal. Like you're not, you don't eat those. Those are for looks, right? The chocolate on the coffee table is just to bring the room together, okay? <laughs> like it's not for you to have any enjoyment, okay? But like she's like, no, like so you don't touch anything. And, and now we laugh at that, and that's funny, but I, I wonder, it, it kind of makes me think that I wonder how, how many, how often, how many of us kind of have that type of a relationship with God in our heart. Of like, we, we kind of plastic wrap it and say like, okay, God, like you can, you can look, but like, please don't touch anything. Like that area, just, I know, but just leave it alone, please. Or like we, we've got these, this stuff in our life that we maybe have given a certain amount to God, but like there's some, so like that, that, that time that person offended us and we want to hold on to that a little bit, right? So like, God, like don't, don't mess with that area. You know what I mean? Like you can have all this other stuff, but please stay out of the, stay out of the guest room, right? Like keep your feet off the coffee table. God, like you can come in, but like don't touch the chocolates, you know, because those are, 
That's just kind of, you, you can look at them, but like, please don't mess with it, right? I wonder how often we kind of have that type of relationship with God where we say, God, you can come in, but you can't touch anything. See, but in Mark 5, what we realized is that it wasn't enough for Jesus just to travel to see this man. There was something in him that if this man, see, again, an encounter with God was always personal and purposeful. And there was a purpose to Jesus coming. It wasn't just about this man. This moment, yes. But the larger deal of this whole city was going to come to know him and God's goodness and compassion through this one man. It was bigger than just him. And what we find is that it wasn't enough for Jesus just to come and sit there. No, he wanted to get in. Jesus wants to get in to your life and mine and do some work, do some digging. What I found is that oftentimes we kind of have some areas that we'd rather him not touch, don't we? So the question that we must ask before we go any further is, God, what, what must go in me? What must go? For some, it might be unforgiveness. It, it might be offense. It might be bitterness. It may be some anger. It may be frustration. It may be the need for control. But whatever it is, it must go. There are some things in us that must go. So again, as we go into this next song, came to my rescue, we got to understand that even though we have at times been a bigger mess than others. Jesus came for us. And he didn't just come just to say, hey, and like, hey, like, cool, like, get into heaven. No, he wants to be in relationship with us. He wants to dig in. He doesn't just want parts of your life to get better and grow and be a part. No, he wants all of it. Every area. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, to condemn you, to condemn me, but to save us, to free us, to heal us, to give us a hope and a future, to show us what real joy and peace looks like. So as you bow your heads and close your eyes, and as we go into this song, Came to My Rescue, ask yourself that question. Ask the Holy Spirit that question. He is here. Holy Spirit, what must go in me? What are you asking to take so that I could be used by you, so that I could show your goodness and your compassion to the world around me? Thank you, Jesus, for coming to my rescue. Whatever it is, take it, it's yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Falling on my knees in worship, giving all I am to seek your face, Lord, all I am is yours. In my whole life, I
wherever you are, whatever's going on. He comes to meet with you and with me, and he loves us so much, he'll meet us anywhere, but loves us too much to leave us there. The third thing we see from Mark chapter 5 is, again, like it makes it clear where this man is at. It's clear to us. We need to understand where we're at if we're going to do what God's called us to do makes it clear that it wasn't enough just to meet him, but there were some things that needed to go. There were some things in him that needed to leave. And then the third thing, the third question is, what must I do? Having seen his goodness, having experienced his faithfulness, having encountered a God who crossed the sea, Jesus who stepped down from heaven, to die a death that we deserved so that we could live a life only he deserved, but who rose again three days later to be in relationship with us forever. Having experienced that and encountered him, what must we do? We see in Mark chapter five that Jesus tells this man to go home, to go home. I don't know about you, but, but that frustrates me a little bit. Because if I was him, I wouldn't have wanted to go home. Back to the place that abandoned me. Back to the people that tried to chain me in the cave a handful of times. Back to the people that hurt me. Back to the people that I hurt. After Jesus does all this, I'm just telling you, like, I would race him to the boat. Like, I'd beat him there. Like I'd want to do everything I could to get in there. But Jesus, there's something different again in Mark 5. Jesus says, no, I need you to go home. What must I do? Ephesians 4, verse 32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another. You want to know what you should do? Having experienced the goodness of God and the compassion that he's had on you and me, what must we do? Be kind. But, but kindness isn't good enough anymore. Like that, that's a good start, but that's not it all. Be kind, be compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. What must we do? God is asking each and every one of us to do something. In context of everything going on in this world, God's asking each and every one of us to do something with the goodness and the compassion that he's shown to us so that others can experience that same goodness and compassion. What must we do? See, in a couple weeks ago, I was, I was reading and, and uh, I was reading the story of Jesus in the garden and, and Jesus is in the garden praying and the Bible says that he's agonizing and, and that his, his sweat is like drops of blood. And, and he asks his disciples for one thing in that moment. He said, hey, would you stay here? Or would you pray? And Jesus comes back to find them asleep. He's agonizing. He's crying out to the Father. Father, if it be your will, take this cup from me. But, it, but if not, like, not my will, but yours. He comes back only to find the people that were closest to him asleep in the moment he needed them the most. And I wonder, as people are crying out all around us every single day, if we maybe tend to sleep through some moments. I wonder how many moments I've slept through over the last six months where I could have reached out, I could have tried to share some hope or some joy or some peace with those around me. But you know, it's not, we, we can't sleep any longer as a church. We, they're, they're, we cannot sleep anymore. It's time. This is our moment. This is the moment to share the love and the hope and the joy of Jesus to those around us. And so what must we do? I got four four suggestions. Find a hurt and heal it. Find a chain and break it. Find a need and meet it. Find a hole and fill it. But whatever you do, do something. 
because there are people all around us crying out and you've seen his goodness you've experienced his faithfulness you've felt his compassion this is our reasonable response you know like this isn't even asking too much this is just what you do when you experience the goodness and the compassion of Jesus we have to do something about it Psalm 107 verse 2 says let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy Psalm 66 verse 16 says come and hear all who fear God and I will declare what he has done for my soul it's time you know it's time no more sleeping no more sitting on the bench no more waiting for things to be over no more waiting for things to get back to normal now is the time this is our moment to show Jesus to people. And I don't know about you, but if I was this man, I wouldn't have wanted to go home. But it's obvious in Mark 5, we're to see that there's a mission we've been given. God has been good to us. God has shown his compassion and it's our job to go and to share it with those around us. So I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes in this place and ask yourself that question. Holy Spirit, what must I do? What are you asking from me? What must I do for some as we go into this last song and we sing of the goodness of God and that is our response? What are we going to do to his, what, how are we going to respond to his goodness in our life? For some, you might need to ask some hard questions of yourself. For some, it might be time to pick up the phone and make that call. For some, it might be time to give up that habit to say, I'm sorry. For others, to say, I love you. Maybe what God's asking you to do in this moment is to forgive. Maybe he's asking you to be obedient. Maybe there's something that he's asked you to do and you haven't done it yet. But now is the time. Now is the moment. It's time to go home. God is putting an emphasis on home. And for some, it might be your physical home. There might be something that needs to go take place in your physical home. But for others, where, wherever you're watching, it might be the city you live in. There are people crying out all around us. You've experienced his hope. You've experienced his goodness. It's time. We respond. Come on, let's worship together. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so say all my life watching online for some of you your response today actually might be to meet the God who is so in love with you that he sent Jesus down from heaven across the water to come meet you in your cave to have an encounter with you to show you how much he loves you and cares for you to give you purpose, to give you hope, to free you, to heal you. 
for some you're watching and you say you know what i i've never made that decision i've never decided to follow jesus i've never started a relationship with him today is your day he's here he came all the way here to meet you so with every about every eye closed you're watching online if that's you and you don't have a relationship with jesus today i just want to encourage you to raise your hand nobody's looking around it's just me if you're watching at home go ahead and raise your hand no one's definitely watching there Every week, people are giving their life to the Lord. Come on, if that's you and the rest of us in this room, would you join in with me? Let's pray this prayer. Say, Jesus, thank you so much for coming to meet me. I need you. I'm a mess. I realize today I need a Savior. Thank you so much for dying for me and for raising again to spend eternity with me. Today, I accept you. I want to be with you. From this day forward, I will follow you with everything. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, can we celebrate with every single person who just made that decision, whether in this room or watching online? We're so proud of you. If that was you, I want to encourage you to text Jesus to 24587. We would love to help you and set you up with some next steps. We're so thankful for you joining us here today. It's been a great Sunday. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for tuning in and watching online.